wonderful people here from the indigenous community. They are our leaders who for many years have lived off the interest of the land, not liquidating their principle, cutting down all the trees, living unsustainably. They are our leaders and our teachers in this. Before I introduce the very first speaker to couple of uh, very important announcements, stay around for the round dance at the closing of the event. It is a Protect the Sacred round dance led by Indigenous peoples and the Hummingbird Intertribal Women's Native Drum. All members of the human family are warmer, warmly invited to join together as we dance for unprecedented unified action to protect the, sec the sacred from climate change. Now I have the great honor of introducing another Indigenous leader, a man who is a friend of mine. I met him years ago in Colorado, in Aspen, Colorado. Phil Lane, he's a member of the Yankton Sioux and Chickasaw Nations. In 1982, Phil co-founded with elders from North America, the Four Worlds International Institute, FWII, with the guidance of Four Worlds Elders Council and Phil's leadership and applied experience. FWII has become an internationally recognized leader in human, community, and organizational development because of the Institute's unique focus on the importance of culture and spirituality in all dimensions of development. In August 1992, Phil was the first indigenous person to win the prestigious Windstar Award presented annually by the late John Denver and the Windstar Foundation to a global citizen whose personal and professional life exemplifies commitment to a global, global perspective, operates with awareness of the spiritual dimension of human existence, and demonstrates concrete, concrete actions of the benefit for humans and all living systems on Earth. And I know that he got that award because I was there when he got it, part of that wonderful event in 92. Phil is active with Idle No More and has won many awards during his 44 plus years working to benefit indigenous people across the earth. Welcome please, Chief Phil Lane Jr. Yeah. Yeah. My very beloved relatives, I give great thanksgiving to the Creator that we're living here in the day not of prophecies but the fulfillment of our prophecies. These prophecies promised after a long, long winter time of 500 years, we would awaken as one human family. Yeah. And we are doing this at this time. Our indigenous prophecies promised at this time there would be a union of the condor and eagle, a reunion of a condor and eagle. And this as well is happening throughout the hemisphere and around Mother Earth. And part of that prophecy, Mitaki Epi, my beloved relatives, is that we would not rest. We would not rest until our beloved Mother Earth is completely protected in its sacredness for our future generations, and that's why we're here. These prophecies also said there is no power in heaven or earth that will stop what it is that we have been destined to do in unprecedented, unified action. On January 23rd to the 25th, we held a grand council at the Hontawa Territories in South Dakota. We had nations come from Canada and the United States to sign the International Treaty to Protect the Sacred from tar sands projects, all forms of tar sands projects. It is time to idle the floor and protect the sacred. And we talk you up in, we are sacred. We are sacred. Each of us is a sovereignty, ancient, imperishable, and everlasting. Every one of us is that. So I want to give thanksgiving to Prime Minister Stephen Harper because of his injustice and his continuing justice, his greed, he has awakened a sleeping giant, a spiritual sleeping giant, a here And I want to say with all the love and respect, with justice, to our President Barack Obama, who was named by the great Crow Nation, given a sacred name that if he signs the Keystone XL pipeline, he will leave a legacy of injustice for as long as history is. He will have broken every promise he made when he came into office to indigenous peoples. 
We do not want our sacred lands destroyed. We do not want our sacred places destroyed. We do not want this to happen in any way. The prophets have said there would come two snakes that would take us away from the earth. One black snake would go upon the earth. Of course, that's the roads that take us away from being outside where these sacred places are, to feel the energy of our Mother Earth. And the second snake, they said, would come, would come underneath the earth. At that time, whatever it took would be for us to stand up and stop it. Not just there, but any abuse of Mother Earth. Because our Mother Earth is not only a Mother Earth that represents our holy women. And our teaching. And our teachings say, our teachings say this without question. The eagle of humanity has two wings. One is man and one is woman. Until both eagle wings of that eagle have equal power and respect and honor, the eagle of humanity will never fly its greatest and highest. That's the truth. That's what's going on this. And that's our responsibility to bring about. Finally, one last thing here. I don't know how my timing's going. Was it showing my minutes here or something? I'm in. Well, Mitaki Epi, I look forward as we move to the future to see the full and complete fulfillment of our sacred prophecies. It will happen. My Dakota way when we close, we say our names and we say, My name is Chidupasapa, a sacred black pipe that's born of thunder, lightning, and rain. My name is Shunkmano, a leader of warriors who takes the enemy's best horses, and I stand responsible as a sovereign being, ancient and perishable and everlasting, for my words and my actions. Ho! Oh! 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 Chief Phil Lane, thank you so much. Thank you. Robert Redford said, this is the beginning. This is the beginning to a real battle for America's future. Hold on to that. At first, it starts at home and our personal choices. But then you need to bring that passion into the community and you need to stay strong because people are going to knock you down. You need to stay strong, stay grounded to Mother Earth. And then next, next, you need to collaborate with one another and other organizations to make this happen because it wouldn't have happened like this today without that collaboration. And one final thing, I'm gonna bring it back to how I started it earlier today. Never underestimate the power of one little pebble because it can sure as hell make waves. Thank you so much. Uh, my beloved relatives, are you ready to dance? Yeah. Are we ready to idle no more? Yeah. So please, we're going to have hummingbird drum. How about it here from hummingbird drum? Yeah. We're going to move right to the center of the circle here, the hummingbird drum. And while we're having our idle no more round dance, we're going to sign another yet step of the international treaty between indigenous nations to stop tar sands projects and to protect the sacred. After we finish that, we're gonna to move to the grass if anybody else wants to join us so we can finish out dance a little bit more. So when our drum's ready, we'll ask all our indigenous relatives, you don't have to be a great dancer. The drum will take you where you need to go. How the Michante Washtelo, Shuk Mano Hemeiro, Chinupa Saba Hemeiro, how the Michante Washtelo. Okay. You did so great. I'm ready to dance. I'm ready to go. We'll have this standing right up here. Can I have this dance? Go round dance, so we get this, we hold hands, we touch ourselves with human energy, we bring the joy of our hearts all together in the round, the circle of life. Our sacred prophecies promised 
that after a long winter time of 500 years, that a new springtime would emerge. A springtime in which not only the indigenous peoples of the human family, but all members of the human family would arise. And arise to protect the sacred. To protect that sacredness of ourselves, our families, Mother Earth, and all living things. And today was another manifestation of that unfolding here at the beginning of the fifth sun, as our Mayan royalties love to talk about and share. And so today was the first time the International Treaty to Protect the Sacred from Tar Sands projects was signed away from where it started in South Dakota on the Ahantua Territory on January 25th, 19. 2013. And so it was really something to have this all women's hummingbird in a tribal uh, drum. It was really wonderful to have the Morning Star Foundation elders and all the relatives that came from all four uh, dimensions of the medicine wheel. I mean, every, every, every member of the human family was here. And they're all in unity and harmony, like one heart and one mind and new bodies. So for me, um, this is not the day of prophecies. This is the day of the fulfillment of prophecies. And as we move forward in 2013, 2014, this process is only going to accelerate. It's only going to, to grow and grow and grow. Uh, at the same time, we have to know when the cry of truth is raised, so is the cry of denial. So we have some challenges ahead of us. But we also know from the prayers of all those that have gone before us, the sacred prophecies, there is no power on heaven or earth that will stop us from fulfilling this understanding of the prior unity and oneness of the human family and establishing a whole new relationship with ourselves, together as human human family, with our beloved Mother Earth, and with the unknowable mystery, the everywhere spirit that guides us all. Well, I would say to a very respected President Obama that you were adopted by the Crow Nation. You were given a sacred name. I listened to your words before your election the first time. And what you promised was you would respect and honor the treaties of the Native American tribes and nations of this land. And that it would be a great, great disappointment and have regrettable consequences if in fact you violate your word and those sacred ceremonies that gave your name as well as what you said prior to an action such as that. We have words for people like this. Right now, you've been telling us these things about how you're gonna protect the environment. How are you going to stop uh, global warming? If you change, you'll be speaking like this. And I don't think you wanna speak like this. So I believe that your message has to be these last four years you're here. The last four years you have to really uplift humanity that you have, in fact, done everything you can to stop not only global warming, to stop and stand up and support the young people who are coming to the seventh generation. I don't believe you want to be known as a president who made decisions because of corporate influences that you know definitely, sooner or later, will cause great damage to not only Mother Earth, but to your children and their children and on and on and on. There's alternatives to using this tar sands oil. This is the greatest carbon bomb on the planet. This, if it's allowed to unfold, will prove to be, I believe, the greatest human cause, uh, environmental catastrophe in the history of the human family. If these tar sands are completely burned as they're being burned now, we know it will cause Mother Earth's temperature to increase by at least five degrees. At that point, who is going to have the blood and the suffering on their hands? 
because it's your sole decision whether or not this black snake was prophesied could destroy our very essence of life, water. Either it's ended here or that greed is continued to go forward. I think we need to be really clear on this. Mother Earth's not sick, we're sick. We're spiritually sick because we don't understand that the hurt of one is the hurt of all and the honor of one is the honor of all. That whatever you do to one part of humanity, you do to all of humanity. And so even though we're in this beautiful city, here with the city hall behind us in Los Angeles, whatever's happening in the tar sands, whatever's happening in the Philippines, whatever's happening in Malaysia, whatever's happening through the Americas, where Mother Earth is being destroyed, and there's not sustainability, there's not harmonious development, but instead there's just greed and selfishness. We all suffer. And we as human beings, in order to re recover our own sovereignty, ancient and perishable and everlasting, need to be able to look inside and really ask ourselves the question, do we really need all this out here? All this materialism that's based on more and more consumption, more and more profit, more and more um, investment in extracting resources from Mother Earth? Or are we at the place where we are ready to awaken our awakening to protecting the sacred within ourselves, for our children, and for all future generations? Because Mother Earth ultimately will continue to live no matter what we do. It's us whose lives are in fact in jeopardy. The change the prophecies speak about is a, an organic change. It's not a band-aid approach. It means a total and complete change the way we live with Mother Earth, the way we live with one another, and what in fact are the values, the life-preserving, life-enhancing values that is at the core and foundation of this new emerging civilization this global civilization which all the prophecies have spoken about. So the idea that we can continue to have a happy and harmonious life while living off the capital of Mother Earth more and more and more is just simply um, not true. It's like, you know, the addict you know, he knows about addictions, you know, the addict has to hit, hit the bottom. And then when they hit bottom, they awaken and see how much denial they've been in, they see all the things they've, people they've hurt and so forth. Well, society has become an addict. Everywhere on Mother Earth. And as any addict, society is in denial of what is really happening through this addiction to oil and all these other um, materialistic uh, um, pursuits that we're trying to fill, which can only be filled through spirit. And so the question comes, in terms of when the big change happens, is how far do we have to go? What is the bottom of human society? Well, we know already two billion relatives of ours don't have clean water to drink. 30,000 people every single day beautiful day we've been here have died from starvation. This cannot be sustained. And one way or the other, we will awaken to the fulfillment of these prophecies. First of all, the solution is to be able to come together in unprecedented unified action and understand we're one human family. Because once you understand we're one human family, you've got to eliminate every prejudice of every form anything that keeps us from being better than or less than somebody else. When that happens, you begin to see then, that adds up to one system of weights, measures, and currency. Now that itself, this idea that we can even uh, do such a thing, most people would say you're crazy. But really, if you understand the herd of one is the herd of all, and we understand we're all relatives, then you take from that position, and then you see where you have to rebuild. So that's one part of it. But it also makes, means that I individually have to be able to take responsibility <clears throat> for my life 
and for everything I do. You know, what kind of vehicle I drive. You know, what do I do with recycling? But yet, on the other hand, it's going to take on the individual action. It's going to take major action, like top, stopping these tar sands. Well, understanding that those technologies we need are on their way. In fact, they're here. We just have to put the resources, put the attention on them for them to manifest. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you.